freaking gorgeous, baby. It's freaking gorgeous, boy! And that's with the dirty windshield. I'm so glad you can't really see the windshield. Because <laughs> this thing is a mess. For some reason, my windshield wiper fluid isn't working. So it is what it is, y'all. And it's full, so I don't know if it's clogged up or what, but it just, it's not working. I tried it, y'all, I tried it. YouTube, welcome to another video, back-to-back -back recording. Yeah, the same thing, they are the same thing. You didn't see the previous video, go ahead and tap, and tap in on that so you know why I think trucking is dead. But I'm going to add on to that statement, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a gloomy guy, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to bring in gloom. But I got a solution for it. For all the young cats out here in trucking, that want to get in trucking, that are in school right now to get in trucking, or just got out of school in trucking looking for this big ass company to go drive for. Or for everybody who who a vet like me, you know, four plus years in the game. I have a solution to the current problem we're going through. I, I, got, I got a solution. Some of y'all might not want to hear it, but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you like I give it to these women, man. <laughs> Raw and uncut, baby. Raw and uncut. Yes, sir. Let's get to it, you two. So my last video, I talk about trucking is dead. I'm currently dead, heading over 800 miles to the house because I pull a driver and the driving rate right now I feel like it's insulting to me. It's an insult. You got companies out here this week. Now today is, uh, I guess today would be Wednesday. Today's Wednesday, probably the first, I think. Okay, Wednesday the first. I got company out there trying to pay me eleven hundred dollars to drive twelve hundred miles with a forty-five thousand pound load. Now nah, this ain't no fiction, y'all. It's facts. It's reality, and that's what the hell they're trying to do, right? So I feel like because of that, trucking is dead. But let me elaborate on this. When I meant by trucking is dead, I meant for us right now this week. Next week might be different, things might happen, blah, 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 blah. We may get back to the golden age of trucking. Okay? What happened in trucking is that you had all these people that came in for the gold rush. When the rates were good, they got this expensive equipment. And now to maintain this equipment, the brokers figured it out. You know what? We can get these people to pretty much do these loads for whatever the heck we want because they have to, to sustain their lifestyle, to keep paying for the equipment or they're gonna go bankrupt. That's what it is. That's what they're doing. Well, anyways, anyways, let's get back to why I think trucking is dead for us. When I made that statement on last video, I meant for driving. It's over for driving this week anyways. Next week might be different, okay? I'm not trying to say it's dead forever. You know, I, I don't see the future. This is why drive fan rates are the way they are. I want you to bear with me for a second, right? So when you get out of trucking school, the first equipment they put you under, no matter what company you go to, unless you specifically choose something, but after that, they're going to put you in a drive van. Drive van is the easiest equipment to drive in trucking. You drive, you back up, you hit a duck, and that's it. You ain't got a tarp. Every now and then, you got to secure a load, right? Drive van is the easiest equipment to drive in trucking. Therefore, every kid that want to get to the money in trucking, become a driver and driver. Am I wrong or no? Okay, I'm not wrong, all right. I'm glad we got that situated. I'm glad we got that handled. Um, the, laws of, the laws of economics detect supply and demand, right? Meaning if there is more so 
supplier than there is demand. Whatever service or product that is, it's going to be cheaper. Okay? That's it. If, if, if you got more oranges in the market than people wanting to buy orange, pretty much some of that orange is going to go bad. They're going to go spoiled. The buyer has had a room to negotiate for that orange. Tri-Van is the most saturated trucking equipment in the game of trucking. That's it. That's it. 70% of trucks on the roads are Tri-Vans. Okay? So you add an oversupply of drivers. You add that in the equation. And then you add desperation in the equation as well. And what do I mean? Well, when we went through the gold rush, you know, a couple years ago, People came in trucking, bought brand new equipment for two times more than what they all want, right? And now they gotta sustain some kind of income to pay for those equipment they got. And so now they are willing to take loads for $1.40 and $1.60 a mile to stay afloat. So you add desperation into saturation, driving. We are saturated like a month for me. We are saturated, like I said. Every new kid that go to truck in school, after that they put their ass in the driver. The supply is over the demand. Now, with that being said, here's the solution on how you can stay afloat. How you make personally, potentially make some money. Driver and reefer. Okay, yeah, reefer is number two when it comes to saturation. Reefer is number two because it's the same damn thing with a generator. Okay, that's it. Reefer, the same damn thing with a generator to cool the product. The only thing is, I, you will never find me no reefer. Uh, never mind, that's a whole, that's a whole different video for another time. But uh, let's get back to it. If you come in into trucking, like you and you a cat looking for a video to tell you what, what equipment you should drive. I recommend flatbed. Right now, flatbed rates are down. Yes, flatbed is kind of like a seasonal thing. No, no, not really. But flatbed, you're gonna have a slow month out the year. Driving, you can probably find a load for driving within a 200 mile radius, regardless of where you at. Right? That statement is like 80 percent correct. Right? I'm just saying because it's facts. They're not paying nothing though, because we're saturated right now. But when it comes to loads, you're gonna find some flatbed. Specifically, step deck, in my opinion. If I was to redo this, I would get a step deck, right? The reason why I say step deck is you got room to grow. Flatbed, once you own the, I mean, drive van, once you own it, you own it. Yeah, you can make more money depending on what the broker wanna pay you. That's it. Something like a step deck or flatbed. You can elevate, right? You can go, you can go from two axles, your standard, you know, flatbed and, and step there, and then you can get triaxle. Next thing you know, you're effing with five axles, and next thing you know, you're pulling uh, 100,000 pound loads and, uh, and, all, and all that, all that, right? The heavier the load, the more money. Drive van, you can't really get any heavier. You know, I'm sorry, you really just, you got your 45 that you're playing with, all right? But flatbed, you learn to secure, you can literally get access to heavier, heavier loads, obviously by you improving on your equipment that you own as well. My advice is you want to make money trucking. I got a buddy named Kyle, whatever. You know, he's making a whole lot of money right now. I ran into this guy, he, he's around $500,000 right now. 500 grand because he does specialize. The key to survive trucking right now is specialized once again the laws of economics come in supply and demand there's not a lot of specialized drivers out here so the demand is high the rate is few but the one that do it i mean the, the, the rate the ratio of loads is fewer than driving it's fewer than regular flatbeds it's fewer than uh reefer but the, the supply that is there has a greater demand for people that are capable and that have the equipment to move those loads. And those people, they ain't feeling nothing. They're like, what? Rate is low. They're not feeling it like you and me. Those people are not feeling what I'm going through right now because they're still getting their $10,000, $15,000 per load. They're still doing it. 
the key is specialized, okay? Whether it be flatbed, you got to put on labor, you got to learn skills on how to, how to secure certain things, okay? That's what I mean by spec. Or do a tanker, man. You're a young buck coming in the game. Do a freaking tanker, man. Get your one year experience in. Go to a company that haul tankers. That's a specialized haul. That's a specialized haul. There's more supply and higher demand for uh, for uh, for tankers, man. You ain't gotta worry about this nonsense. If I if I if I was pulling tanker right now under my own authority, man, I ain't gotta worry about competing with your ass for a dollar sixty. No, I ain't gotta worry about that. So that's advice. Specialize in your equipment, man. Don't do the basics that we all out here doing, and that's the problem. There's too many, too much supply of dry van and refill drivers. Seventy percent of the trucking industry is made up of dry van and refill drivers. And then obviously flatbed, basic flatbed company. Once you get to specialize, have your that's why you become specialized. Once, once you can cost 60, 70, 80,000 pounds on your, on your equipment, that's when you become the man. That's when you start making, like, you, you start telling them what to pay you rather than them telling you what you get paid, okay? So that's specialized. And then, you know, you got pneumatic, the thing I used to do before I, I came out here. That's a specialized kind of trucking too. Because you need special skills to run a nomadic trailer. Okay? The supply of nomadic driver is little, but the supply of loads that all create the demand. So there's a demand for nomadic drivers. It's not saturated. The loads are few, but when you find them, you damn near gonna get the money that you want. Why? Because you know, Akim Muhammad and Jose too busy pulling a driver and a reefer for a dollar thirty a mile, uh, and they don't want to take the time to learn how to operate a pneumatic trailer. They don't want to take the risk of hauling a tanker. They don't want the headaches of doing permits or do heavy hauling oversize. That, my friend, is the solution to your lasting in truck. That's the solution that your favorite YouTuber ain't gonna tell you, YouTube. I know the video is lengthy, the video is long, but I'm trying to save your trucking career. If you wanna make it, at least for the next year or two, watch Sleepy Joe or whoever is in office, I want you to think about it, man. I want you to think about it hard. You got to specialize in something if you wanna survive. Otherwise, just like I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna have to compete with every freaking body else. But I refuse to lower my standard under two dollars and forty cents. I, that's, I've already gone low enough. How low do you want me to go? Damn! It's either that, just like the fuel prices be doing, it be weeding out the, the, the it be weeding out that the gold rush boomers, right? It be weeding it out that, that, that the price of fuel has put a lot of people out of business. People, in my opinion, that I think don't have business coming in here. So, we got that, and then maybe, you know, maybe this low rate, we, we, we get rid of someone, so, you know, we get rid of more people. We'll get rid of more people. So that's what I'm thinking, man. That's what I'm looking at, that's what I'm thinking. So once the supply of dry van and reefers die down a little bit, maybe we start seeing some respect from these damn brokers. If you a broker, and you effing drivers, this is for you right here. I know it's dark and black. I know you can't see it, but look closely. Yeah, boy. All right. That's my advice, man. Haul a flatbed and level up to triaxle. Okay. In flatbed, you know, you can do partials, man. But I got an insider telling me even the partials ain't doing it. And he said in this last like week or two, he be struggling too as a driver, as an open deck. He pulls an open deck, man. Cause I thought, you know, flatbed, usually, regardless of the rate, you can you can you can put together a few uh a few partials and, and be able to make some money. That's how flatbed makes some money. So you know, like them, like like I said, they got a slow season, you know, they got slow season. But he said, he said, 
it's looking rough for them too. So elevate, man. You get it flat, man. Learn to secure me elevate. I, I don't know what you gotta do. Get your credit right. Go to try asking, man. Go to the part of trucking where you are in demand, not a not a leftover. Okay. This dry van is not in demand. Otherwise, these damn brokers were paying us more money. So you know, I'm gonna move accordingly. I can't tell y'all my plans, but that's my advice for you, man. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. If you're a company driver, I really, really recommend you go to a tanker division, man. Learn what you gotta learn about tankers. Make that 60 cents a freaking mile. You are on the operator. I really recommend you try to lease onto a tanker division. I got history pulling tankers, right? I've worked in the oil field. I can pull pneumatic. The only thing I really have been done for an excessive amount of time is flatbed, but I've done flatbed you know, for like two months. So I don't think that's going to count. But the point is, I'm going to move accordingly. You get, you move accordingly. There's still money that we made. Don't be discouraged. But please, man, please. I hope you listen. To sum this long gas video up. You want to make money in trucking, you got to specialize in something. Don't be basic. Until next time, you two.